Yo, 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 what's up, people? My name is Tonachi, and I'm back here in the world of Satisfactory. Alrighty, I hope you're keeping very well. Alrighty, so it's time for another video with lots of fruity and funky ideas that are very impractical and not very useful. Not really selling myself, am I? No, not really, no. Never mind. Anyway, alright, so I've often seen the idea of a priority merger uh, in the comments and on other videos here and there as well. I know there's been a video done on priority merger quite some time ago. I know I've seen it. It's, it was a while ago now. And the system that I saw was actually pretty good. It was basically like loads of splitters and mergers that stacked on each other on each other with like a conveyor lift going up i think if you basically just search it with new true priority merger i can't remember who did it to be honest anyway that idea worked pretty well but however i did want to have my own little go with this and see what i could come up with and it's a very small very simple system that basically allows to set different priorities to different belts and on this particular setup with two containers it gives us three priority inputs so this is priority input one priority input two and priority input three on the last container you can use both of these inputs but you can't use this input now the good thing of this particular priority merger kind of sets up uh, it can be infinitely expanded so here we've got two containers but you can expand this put another container three and then four and then five and go on and on and on and every time you add a another container set up like this you add an extra input so for example if say you had five uh, different belts that you wanted to prioritize here we got three but say you had five and you wanted to prioritize them you could basically just copy and paste this another two more times which would give you five inputs on the first four you would use only the bottom input but on the last container you can use both the bottom and the top input well jason if you're watching uh, some time ago you sent me a save game file on a for a system that you were trying to do load balancing and you did a very clever system where you were basically uh, utilizing the last slot in a container to help you manipulate and control the flow uh, of items. Now you were using it, I think for a load balancer, which was very, very clever. I'm kind of using a very similar idea here by filling the container with any old item. And this can be any item you want, doesn't matter. I'm usually using concrete, filling every slot with concrete and exactly the same for this container as well. Every slot filled with concrete. And on the front side here, very simple, just using one of the outputs here. And on the split side, we've just got any undefined to go straight. And on the left output, we've got concrete just to cycle all the way back around and join this merger and the output of this splitter it joins that merger at the back there and it's exactly the same any undefined to go left to join that merger at the back there and the concrete to cycle background and to join at the back of the container here as I, as I said if we wanted to add another container let's say we had four belts we wanted to prioritize we'd add one more container here uh, the splitter at the front the output of the any undefined output would have to come and join at the front here you get the idea anyway it's pretty simple and this belt will always have priority over that one uh, sorry this input will always have priority over this one and so on and so on and so on for every one you added all right so how does this work so let's put this uh, item and this will be priority free so this has the lowest priority so the the sulfur is obviously coming straight out because it has nothing to contend with and because the last slot is empty in the container basically what's happening is the sulfur just going straight into the container going straight into the last slot and leaving the last slot straight away and doing exactly the same thing, going into the last slot of this container and then going straight out into the output. But if we pick up the another item and put it into priority slot number two, what's going to happen now is because this particular input is not contending with the concrete, um, basically the speed of this input is faster than the speed of this input because the concrete here is interrupting the um, the sulfur. What happens is, is that it gives whatever the input on the bottom straight access to the, to the last slot. Basically, whatever you put into the bottom slot will always override this one. So as you can see, the iron ore has stopped the sulfur completely. The iron ore has taken priority. And because the iron here is contending and being interrupted by the concrete a little bit, it's not really filling that last slot. It's only going one, two pieces and emptying. And you can see the last slot keeps changing between uh, uh, concrete and iron. And that's, that's solely because of this concrete is interrupting it and slowing it down a little bit. And as long as these belt speeds are similar, here you've got a Mark 4 and here you've got a Mark 5. As long as they're kind of similar, there's not like two difference in between them. And um, basically, as I said, the last slot, iron is not basically filling up in that last slot, as you can see. So what that allows, as soon as we uh, plug in this one in priority slot one, uh, you can see Cole basically picked it up straight away because every now and then that slot was emptying. And as soon as it would empty, because uh, the coal doesn't have to contend and it's not interrupted by the concrete, it basically, at the first opportunity, it picks up the empty slot and it takes priority over whatever's coming in here, whether that be the iron or the sulfur. And if we were to stop the, the coal, uh, this has to empty out first, but let's just speed up the process. 
and empty that up manually. As you can see, the priority two is going ahead. And um, here, if we plug in one with the, the sulfur being the only other one on priority three, you can see that the coal is going straight in and it will stop the sulfur straight away. And as soon as we stop this, the sulfur goes through. And the same here, if I put the iron on priority one, the same thing will happen. As soon as the iron goes into the, that, that bottom import, it will come straight out and block the, the sulfur uh, going in. So it's a very simple process, really. As I mentioned, the only kind of uh, thing that is needed for this system is that, that these import belts are, are in similar speed. And the, the first import here has to be a similar or faster than the uh, than the, the output belt there. But anyway, uh, that's my little priority merger. And for most part, it seems to work just fine. I don't really, well, I can't really think of any particular use case scenario for it. Out of all the bases I've done on all the projects and all the factories I've done, I don't think there's ever been a scenario where I actually could have used the priority merger. Maybe one case here and there, maybe possibly, but I'm not sure how useful that is. Maybe it's useful for someone, um, but you know me, I like experimenting with different ideas. All oh, right, so coming on here to the second idea. Now this idea I actually do like, I do like a lot. It's got possibilities, I think. I'm not 100% sure how it could work, but if it does work, what if it might work the way I think it could possibly work, um, it would be a great kind of like a, feeding system for a new configurable factory that I could possibly do, uh, maybe in update five. I know it looks messy for now, but you know what they say, you can never judge the cover by the book and you can kill three stones with five birds and you can eat your cake and then have it. I never understood that saying, have your cake and eat it. No, I know what it's trying to portray, right? I know, but is, surely there's a better way to, to say that. Like for example, you can save your money and spend it. I mean, that to me makes much more sense and it's very clear on what that, that meaning of that message, but have your cake and eat it. What's the point of having a bloody cake if you don't eat it? I don't get it. I mean, seriously, if it was my birthday and someone said to me, happy birthday, Archie, happy birthday, here's your cake. But you can't eat it. Happy birthday, Archie, eat your cake, but you can't have it. I, like, what, what, I mean, we're gonna have problems. I mean, if that was my tea and you said to me, Archie, here's your tea, but don't drink it. I'd be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have problems. Or oh, Archie, drink your tea but you can't have it. Like, what on earth are you talking about? What's happening? Have your cake and eat it. Doesn't make no sense to me. I know the meaning behind it. I just surely there's a better way to say that message. Like I said, spend your money and save it. That to me is so much more clearer. You can't spend your money and save it. But the only point of having a cake is to eat the bloody thing. What else am I going to do? Look at it. It's the only point of having a cake is to have it and then eat it. I mean, who wants a cake just to have it and look at it? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of that very rare anecdotal example of that cake shop who just makes cakes to put on display, not to be eaten. That, that cooking show on TV where they bake cakes and they show for these very elaborate and extreme cake creations that look absolutely amazing. Not to be eaten, just just to be admired and judged. All right, all right, fair enough. That's where you, you don't want to eat the cake, you just want to have it. But that, that's, that's a rare anecdotal example. Generally, when I have my cake, I want to eat the bloody thing. Yes, yes. Anyway, enough of that. What was I saying? Um, yeah, satisfactory, good game in it. So here we've got three different belts coming in, uh, very similar to the um, thing over there. Where we've got some sulfur, we've got some coal, we've got some iron and they're all draining one merger and then over here we've got a splitter with just overflow on each of the outputs so nothing special and for this idea you can have any you can have any undefined on all three they all work exactly the same for this particular idea we can ignore this for now you can ignore all these splits and mergers and ignore that for now all we're going to concentrate on right now is this central part so let's connect that to there and connect that to there now we're going to notice this very um very cool output here they all separate all the coals on the left all the sulfur's in the middle and all of the iron ore is in the right. Now, if you look here in the middle, I haven't selected any of the outputs here to say iron ore to come right, sulfur to come in the center and coal to come in, this, in, in the left side. But as you can see here, all three belts are joining together on these mergers, uh, all mixed together, but yet on the output, they're all completely separate. Now, what that means basically is that these mergers and these splitters, they merge and they separate and they split sequentially. So they're not just joining this merger randomly. And I think what happens basically is these three will join and then inside it will have a buffer once it gets three items or nine, I'm not sure exactly how it works. Once it has a, a few of those items, then it releases all three simultaneously. That's caught my interest is that even though we have three inputs all merging mixed together, here they're separating uniformly. So we have sequential merging and splitting. Now what's important to this uh, working like that is that these belts are all the same speed. They're all Mark II speeds. Now if we increase them to, ex for example, to mark three belts. It'll get messed up a bit because we've completely messed up the sequence. But just give it a little bit of time and you can see it's not very long. 
they will kind of separate again because the ratio here of how they're joining this merger it keeps the sequence nice and orderly and structured which allows them to be split in that same sequence as they've joined to give us that um, separate output which is basically uh, mimicking exa the exact same input. Now it doesn't matter here if we had 20 different items on this belt, 50 di different items on this belt, 80 different items on this belt, whatever's on this belt will come out exactly on that belt. Like for example, if we were to, let's um, let's put a splitter here and a merger here and let's merge that onto there. And then let's, uh, what speed is that? Yeah, it doesn't matter actually. Let's join that onto there. So now we have two items on this belt once I put this to overflow. So now on this belt, we have, um, we're gonna have coal and sulfur. So now on this belt, let's see, will we have coal and sulfur, even though we've, as we've mixed, yeah, you can see, even though we've mixed this belt, it's got two different items. It still kept the same sequence as the coal and sulfur is joining onto this merger. Therefore, it's releasing it in the same sequence as it's joining, keeping the coal and sulfur on the same belt so we could have 50 different items as i said on that belt 100 on that belt as long as we use the same speed all mark three belts or we can go to, let's go to mark four belts here it will mess up the pattern for a little bit oh, it hasn't even messed it up look at that it's still keeping the same order nice let's go back down to um mark two belts it's messed it up a little bit just give it a little bit of time oh it hasn't actually straight away there's the coal and the sulfur belt, there's the iron belt, and there's the soul, uh, coal belt. Um, let me just separate that for a second, solely to sulfur. It's just easy to identify what's happening when we do that. And let's see, now that's, that's all sulfur now. And that should, yeah, there you go, all sulfur. So as it is, it's interesting to know, but is there any practical use case scenario for this kind of sequential output that is uh, happening here, keeping the same sequence and releasing it in exactly the same way that it's been merged here. And what would happen if we were to delete this belt here? Let's see. Now we've completely messed up the, the sequence because it can't release it in the same way that the merger is absorbing those those three belts. And if we, let's say for example, if we delete uh, the coal, so now we just have iron and sulfur. You can see again, it's uh, separated the iron and sulfur into their respective their belts, keeping them separate. The splitter is absorbing those two inputs in the same sequence every single time the splitter is uh, splitting them in that same sequence okay so let's put that back now now what would happen if we were to put a mark 4 belt we've got 480 items per minute 120 and 120 so the mark 4 belt is double the output of both of these two combined and what's happening here so the coal which is 480 items is now taking up two of these belts so you can see that the sequence is remaining because these are, are even ratios if i was to make this a mark 3 belt it wouldn't work because the ratio is different mark 3 is 270 i think it is so the ratio is completely different to 120 but because it's a mark 4 it's keeping it an even distribution uh, in the sequence the the sequential distribution of a splitter allows it to uh, split in a kind of uniform um, a manner by having two belts now here you can see what's happened um, the distribution has changed I'm not sure why that happened because I haven't actually done what I was going to do but it's still keeping two belts iron and then the other one is mixed of the iron and the, the sulfur. I'm not sure why that it was causing it to, to, to change there, but that's actually what I wanna to get to next. Okay, every now and then you will get one item pop out, but it does eventually equalize and uh, sort itself out to be stable. All right, so you get the idea. I wanna put this back now to a Mark II belt. Now I'm thinking, how could this be interesting? Knowing the fact that we can somewhat rely on the output of a splitter if the input ratios are even and balanced, allowing for the sequence to be constant, which allows us to know that the output of a splitter will also be somewhat organized and sequenced. How could we use this to our advantage? Now let's say for example, we were to take um let's get one of these um these storage containers let's connect that belt there now let's for example take one item doesn't matter what what item we take let's add sulfur to this container just to break the sequence of what's happening here what, what would it do to the output here have a look now it's completely shifted over the output coal was there is now moved to there the sulfur was here which is now moved to here and iron was there, which is now moved to over there. All right, so let's do that again one more time. Any item, doesn't matter what item we use. 
we've got a uh, one iron ore there so all we're doing is just putting one iron and we're merging it into this split uh, into this merger just to, uh, to to break their sequence a little bit so I look at the pattern sulfur was there is now over here um, and the coal which was there uh, sorry the coal which was here was now there so it's basically moving clockwise the output to a different belt again one more time now check the pattern so far iron coal so far iron coal it's all moved clockwise one step very interesting i think anyway that's because i'm a bit of a sad bastard and i just find this kind of stuff quite interesting i was kind of aware of the the ordered structured sequenced output of a splitter from before um, but i didn't realize you could kind of manipulate it to this extent now i did a video some time ago about how to output a very specific exact amount of a bell and what i did was um, a one minute loop so this this is basically a loop a mark one bell which takes exactly one minute from the output of that splitter to go all the way around, come back here, go into that merger, go through there and come out again, exactly one minute. Now when I say exactly one minute, I mean one minute and about 20, 30 milliseconds. It's a different kind of a layout than I did in the video that I did because that video had a Mark IV belt in between this splitter and merger, which surprisingly changes the speed, uh, the timing quite a bit. Now because I'm using a, a Mark I belt going in between here, it changes the speed and the timing. So. Um, that's why I've got a kind of different kind of um, track here than the video that I did. But anyway, the only thing that's important to know here is that this is a one minute track and I've got one concrete, it's, it's in between there and it's going to come at any second, there you go. I've got one concrete going around every minute and then what that will do is every minute that will output, uh, that one concrete will go around onto this merger and then interrupt one of this sofa to come along this belt and join this merger which will then every minute it will rotate the output of what's happening here and remember these belts can be completely mixed i could have 50 different items on there i could have all the resources on there that i need to make circuit boards but say i want to change my mind and i want to go somewhere else later uh, you can see it's uh, overflowed staggered one and as you can see here what will happen the output is completely changed it's all moved over clockwise basically and every minute this will basically change the output of these belts and that's one way to change the output i could increase this by making this a mark ii belt but that basically makes it a 30 second uh, track so now every 30 seconds um, this concrete will go into that merger causing one so far to come into this merger and to interrupt the sequence which will cause these outputs to move over one clockwise here anyway, we'll see it happen now how else could we manipulate this let's say for example we had it on a what's it called one of these truck stations now here as you can see i've just got one concrete that's the only thing that's there we've got one concrete just waiting to go into that truck station it can't go in because the truck station has no power at the moment but let's say for example we connect this uh, truck station to one of these power switches we turn the truck station on for a second and off as you see the concrete came through now we can manually manipulate how these outputs change. Interesting, no? Is it just me? Am I the only sad bastard that finds that interesting? Probably. So basically there's two different ways we can kind of manipulate the sequenced output of this splitter on these three different belts. As long as the input is the same, the output will stay the same as well because mergers absorb sequentially and splitters, uh, they split sequentially as well. In the same sequence, as they receive. You've got the idea, very simple. It can be manipulated on a timer by using some kind of a contraption like that, or it can be manipulated um, manually by some kind of contraption like this, or it could be manipulated automatically by the overflow of machinery. Now that's a more complicated setup because it's not easy to overflow one item um, from an, from the a constant overflow of a machine. Um, it's a little bit harder to set up, and um, I'm pretty sure it can be done, but just it's a little bit harder to do here all right so how could this be interesting in any kind of practical use now probably for most people it's not interesting or useful at all it might be interesting to know if you're a bit of a geek like me but not useful but however i'm thinking that i could actually manipulate this system on a much more complicated larger scale than what you're seeing here to control the flow of belts in a configurable style factory now, as i said i'm a bit of a sad bastard and i like these really alternative and weird setups but I know there's a lot of clever guys and girls out there as well who could possibly maybe think of another possible use of this where you could shift the output of three different belts as long as the input is structured and keeping in mind that you can have 
as many different items on these belts. It looks uh, absolutely useless now, but I think I can actually think of a really useful scenario for this kind of function and application here. Never judge the book by the cover, or in my case, never judge the cover by the book. And here maybe we can actually have our cake and eat it at the same bloody time. Yes, yes. If any of you guys actually got any possible useful um, scenario, uh, use case scenario for something like this, a setup like this with alternating output, sequential alternating output based on a, and a uniform ratio input, please, uh, let me know in the, in the comments i'll be happy to share as i said i know there's a lot of clever guys and girls out there who can uh, possibly think of a more useful uh, use case scenario for some kind of function like that on this one i'm not actually someone who actually has ever used uh um, priority mergers and to be honest the other priority merger that i've seen on the other video is actually really really good in some cases better than this and the only way that this might be a little bit um, more functional and useful is that it can be expanded um to uh, accommodate as many and prioritize as many uh, belts and inputs as you want but anyway guys uh, I hope you've enjoyed my uh, unusual experimental ideas of eating my cake and then having it or in this case um, merging my random resources and then still having them I still don't get that saying maybe it's just me anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching and maybe I'll catch you again soon